Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa. For those of you who are new around here, welcome. I am an artist and an artisanal handmade watercolor paint maker. That was a mouthful. If you like today's video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I will be bringing you content every Saturday. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a step-by-step -step process for making this pretty watercolor moon. I'll also be walking you through the supplies that you need in order to make this. You don't need to use exactly what I use, just use what you have. I am a firm believer in using the supplies that you have instead of going out to buy new supplies. So we're gonna make this piece. We are making it on Legion Stonehenge watercolor paper. So this is 100% um, cotton cold pressed paper. If you don't have 100% cotton paper, I give you a few tips during the tutorial on how you can keep your paper wet and keep your piece from having hard water lines. I am also going to be using a variety of brushes and I will show you each brush as I use them. In order to draw your moon, you're going to need a circular object. I use this circle maker tool and I'll list all of the tools that I'm using in the description down below. You don't need to use this particular tool. You can use any circular object that you have around the house. In terms of color, I'm going to be using the colors from my Galaxy palette. Now this is the main palette that I use anytime I am doing any Galaxy paintings, any celestial art, I use the colors from this palette. As we are painting, I will name every color that I'm using and if you have something similar, feel free to use that. We will be using Copic Opaque White. You can use any white paint that you have. Uh, be it acrylic, watercolor. I know a lot of people like to use Dr. P.H. Martin's white. It will all give you the same effect. Finally, I will be using some shimmers from my uh, handmade watercolor line from the Sprout Creative. Okay, so grab your supplies and join me as we paint this moon together. All right, let's begin with drawing a circle on our paper. So I'm going to use the full outside um, edge of the circle maker since it's the biggest one. I'm going to start by taking my biggest brush, which is a size 10 round watercolor brush. And the first step is to lay some clean water on your paper. Make sure to keep the water within the circle. If you're using a 100% cotton watercolor paper, the paper will remain wet a little bit longer than regular paper, than regular wood pulp paper. However, um, feel free to use any paper you have. Just remember to keep the paper wet so if your paper starts drying off, and eventually this one will as well, uh, depending on how slow or how fast I go. But if your paper starts to dry off, um, just remember to re-wet the pieces or the sections that have dried so that you don't get any hard water spots on your paper. Okay, I'm gonna go in first with a very light wash of Helio Purple by Sennelier. And that would be this color here. I usually take it directly from the pan. Um, however, you can water it down a little by putting it on your palette. That will help you, especially if you're just beginning, it would help you control the amount of paint that you put on your paper. I'm gonna begin by tapping in just a little bit of this color, um, as light as can be. Wash off my brush a little and spread that color out. I'm going to keep the pinks and purples uh, mostly to one side. I'll bring it in a little but not too much. So I'm gonna have the pinks and purples on this side. I'm going to add a little bit of blue on this side. Next, I'm going in with some Bright Clear Violet by Magello Mission Gold. And I am starting to put that along the edges and then tap the color in.
I like to mix my colors while they are on the paper. So you can see here, I'm just mixing it in a little bit with the pink, cleaning off my brush, and going in with a clean brush to drag the edges out. And I'm going to do that a few times so that I don't have any hard edges. And we'll do that on the other side as well. And as I'm dragging these edges out, I'm depositing the, the smallest bit of color on the other side of the moon. This also helps to keep your paper wet. And I'm gonna go in just a little bit darker with that purple and add it to the edges. clean my brush off and bring those edges out a little. Now we're going to go back into the Helio purple, which has a, a pinkish hue to it. And this time we're going to add a little bit more saturation so add a little bit more color to your brush and plop it in there. I also like to mix that in with my purple. Clean your brush off and soften those edges. All right, let's switch over to blue now. For this blue, I'm going to be using Peacock Blue, also by Magello Mission Gold. I'm watering that down just a little. We're gonna start off light and then darken it up. So I'm depositing that color by tapping it in. And then cleaning off my brush and smoothing out those edges. And you can see around here, it's already mixing in with the purple. So it's giving it a nice blue-violet look to it. I'm gonna clean off my brush once more and mix those colors in just a little. I'm also gonna come over here and soften these edges a bit. At this point, you wanna take a look at it and see if you need to add any more um, pink or blue or purple. And it looks like it's uh, missing just a little bit more of this helio purple so the helio purple has more of a pink hue to it so you'll he, uh, hear me reference it as pink quite a bit in this video and i'm going to try to leave this area here a uh, pretty light so i'm just going to add a tiny tiny the tiniest bit of pink Plop it in there, clean your brush off, and spread it out a little. And if you go outside of the lines a bit, that's okay. We're going to add a bit of color to the edges so that will um, blend right in. Perfect. And finally, we're gonna go back in with a little bit more of the bright clear violet and define this area just a bit more. Just add a bit more color to this area. And we're gonna clean off our brush and soften those edges.
if you wanted to add a little bit more blue around here, now is the time to do it while your paper is still wet. We're gonna drop some blue into the purple and brighten this area up just a little bit. And remember in between colors, go back in with a clean brush and soften the edges. And while you're doing that, you will be pulling in some of the other colors, which is perfectly fine. While the paper is still wet, we are going to switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to go to a size six and it has just a little bit of a smaller tip. And I'm going to go in with some Copic Opaque White to add a little bit of detail to the moon. I'm going to add a few dots of white here and there. Not too much, we don't want it to be too excessive. Just a few dots here and there. And now I'm going to splatter some of this white across the moon so I'm gonna load my brush up with white and then tap it in here so it's not so this effect will give you small smaller little splatter pieces um, as opposed to these big ones it's, uh, I got a little crusty fall there <laughs> okay now we're going to go in again once more with the Copic Opaque White and add a bit of white to this area. And as you can see here, I'm just tapping that color in. You don't want to mix this too much um, because what's going to happen if you mix it around too much instead of just tapping it in, you're going to start mixing that white in with the color underneath. And what you're going to get is a pastel moon. If that's the look you're going for, then that's perfect, perfectly fine. Um, but that's not what we're looking for in this piece. So we're just going to go in and tap some of that color in. Or tap some of the white in, not the color. And try not to mix it in too much with the color underneath. Now I'm going to dry my brush off after I've cleaned it and clean up some of these edges. And the reason I like to clean these edges off is so that I don't have a harsh, bright white spot in the middle of the moon. So if you clean those edges off, it just kind of makes it blend into it. Now we're gonna go in with a fairly dry brush into your white and add some craters and lines on the moon. So I'm going to pick a spot that has a little bit more color than um, than just the white. So we can see here, there's a little bit of color here. So I'm gonna draw a little bit, a little circle. And we're going to pull from the middle outwards. We're going to do um, some little line definitions. And this is gonna be very subtle.
very subtle. And you can see I picked up some of that purple there and that's okay. Load it with paint again or load it with the white and sprinkle some more over this. To finish this piece off, I'm going to take some of my shimmer and I think for this one we'll go in with a bit of this um, of this color here and it's called Twinkling Lights. And this color shows up as a, a, a very clear soft shimmer and when you tilt it towards the light it shines a very soft gold. So I'm just going to dip my brush in there and splatter it onto the piece. And this is gonna provide some really nice uh, shimmer to your moon. And now we're gonna make sure that this piece is fully dried before we move on to the next step. So for this, I'm gonna take my little hair dryer, my trusty little hair dryer, um, and dry this off fully. Once it's fully dry, you can really see that shimmer come through. You can see right over here, we have flecks of shimmer. And it just gives it that really pretty final touch. Okay, so we are done with the moon part. You can leave your moon as is, just against the white background. For some reason, that doesn't really appeal to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and fill in the background with a very dark blue color with little variations of purple in it to kind of match the moon. And for this part, I am not going to wet the paper. I'm just going to continue painting on a um, on a dry paper. So I'm going to be using the wet on dry technique, your wet brush against the dry paper. So switching back to my bigger brush, which is the size 10, the size 10 Craftimo, I'm going to go in with Anthranquinone Blue, which is this color right here. And I want to make sure to get as much of that paint on my brush as possible. I want this color to be very dark. And this is where you have to be extra careful so that your color doesn't seep into the moon. Um, I can tell you right off the bat that I usually have little accidents here. So, but we're going to try our best to be very careful. So we're going to go slowly around the moon and work in sections. I'm going to work on this section first and then work my way around. And I want to keep the color as dark as possible. So I'm going to keep dipping in every so often into the blue. Wetting my brush in between. And I also wanted to add a bit of purple to it. I'm not going to clean my brush off too much. I don't mind if my colors mix on the pan. So I'm going to add a little bit of purple to that. And it's the same purple that we used here. But we are mixing it in with the blue. So that bits of purple and blue shine through. And we're taking it right to the edge of the paper. And you'll just see me alternating between the purple and the blue. There's no rhyme or reason, just uh, do what feels right. And just be careful around the edges of the moon. In order to keep one side of your paper from drying, I like to go back in every so often and deposit a little puddle of paint on the other side just to keep it wet so that we don't have any hard lines when we are um, when we're blending and when we get there. And every so often I'm looking back over here to see if this is still wet. If it's still wet, we're good to go. 
And don't worry because we're going to be working in two layers. So if this happens to dry off on you, that's okay. We'll go back in with a second layer. I like to make this color as deep as possible. So that's why I like to work with more than one layer. Okay, and I'm turning my paper as I go. It makes it that much easier to work on. And this piece here is drying up a bit, so we're gonna add a little bit more color here. We're just gonna add a little puddle of paint to keep that from drying. Okay, we are done with our first layer, and now we're gonna add our second layer. We're gonna start where we started before, right on this edge, and we're gonna work our way around once again. So when I work on my second layer of a painting, I don't match the colors of the first layer to the second. So if I have blue here, which I have, I'll go over that with purple. Or if I have the purple, I'll go over that with the blue. With the blue. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what color you have laying underneath, you can lay the other color on top of it. I feel like that gives it a little bit more depth to the piece and it makes the blending of the sky a little bit more natural. So we're going to do the same thing that we did in the first layer on the second layer. Just alternating between the blue and the purple. And remember to keep this edge wet. We're going to add a little bit more of a puddle here because I see a, it's a drying a little bit. So we're going to make sure to keep that edge nice and wet and continue adding our colors. And as you can see, by adding, by continually adding paint to this area and allowing it to stay wet, now you have a seamless background. We're going to allow this to fully dry. And I'm going to use a hairdryer to speed up the process. And here you have a beautiful multicolored moon with shimmers. And you can see how that moon just sort of pops to the surface with a nice dark background. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. As I stated earlier, I will put all of the supplies that I used in the description box below, along with links on where you can find them. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next week. Hello, hello. <clears throat> Knock it off. Sorry. Stop it. I'm sorry. No laughing. I'm sorry. I'm recording. <laughs> Cotton water paper. Water paper. <laughs> so this is a palette of... Uh, spe <laughs> And also during my, 
I will put all of the supplies that I used in the district. <laughs> Check out some videos here. <laughs>